Hello YouTube, welcome to another workbench video here on my Model Railway channel. My name's Matt and uh, you can find various uh, videos on my channel of how to do little jobs to your locos and carriages. Today I thought I'd do something a little bit different and show how something's actually done. I thought I'd entitle this one Talking About Teak. See what I've done there? Yeah, it doesn't get much better unfortunately. But anyway, I thought since I was doing some carriages in teak and uh, re replacing some of my stock and making new stuff, I thought I'd show how it's done. So in front of us you can see three models plus three tins of paint. Um, all good things come in threes, so might as well talk about all three things. So, over on my back left here is a carriage which I 3D printed. Over on the left here is a GN Saloon which you've probably seen on other videos I've done. This is a reprint which I've done at home. and This is an old body off the old chassis which uh, is a bit bent these days so it's gotten a bit warped. In front, of, in front of that is three tins of paint which are produced by Phoenix to create the teak livery. There's three stages of uh, producing a teak finish on a carriage and I've sort of got it off of uh, RM Web as there's a lovely uh, image of how to do it uh, from start to finish so the three stages but I'll try and show you how to do it live in three stages if you like but it's going to be cut and shut together over a, a period of time so let's look at how to start it off first So the first step is to build your model, prepare it, get it ready, cleaned and prepped for painting. So if you're going to do a teak finish or a wood finish on a carriage, um, there's always an undercoat and the undercoat on this is white primer. Now this is a, another teak carriage that I've printed a number of months ago. You may recognise it from the Great Restoration program on Channel 4. This is the Isle of Wight carriage number 10 produced by Oldbury and it's been 3D printed by myself and designed by myself. Um, so this has been prepped, cleaned and readied for painting. So the first step is what I use is white primer. So you can see here the base primer, you can see it's white and it's been sprayed on and this primer is from Halfords. Uh, you can use any plastic based primer if you wish and this is the one I prefer to use. Um, so a quick dusting of that, make sure it's all nice and even, flatted back and any holes or dips or whatever are filled and sanded back and then primed again. So making sure the surface is ready to go and nice and flat. So that is primed and ready to go and fully dry. Start painting your need for paints to go with it. And here are the three pots of paint that I use. And you can see here the teak base coat, which is a cream. As you can see on there, this is P995. It is basically just a creamy uh, finish. So you put that on first to get a nice undercoat or a wash of the light sort of grains of wood. You can sort of see this. I've already done the first layer on this GN Saloon. So this has been washed over with the 995 underneath, so the base coat and this has been washed on which has been thinned out with some uh, enamel thinners so, it's, so you can see there's still bits of white showing through which is just how you want it really. It's a nice light coat uh, but it's mainly all the cream colour and you can see I haven't done the end on here so you can just see the start of it and the second stage which is putting the uh, base coat on. So after putting on the base coat uh, you can then pick from two teaks. Now I tend to use a weathered teak which you can see on the left which is P996. It's a bit darker 
but it shows the age of a carriage but if you've got one that's just come out of the workshop then you might want the other one which is a golden teak and this is a much brighter and much more vibrant but I much prefer to use the teak one because that more um, emulates what you can see on um, preserved carriages like the Metropolitans or um, Gresleys or, or, or whatever teak carriage you have which you're going to paint so I mainly pick this one and then weather it down with uh, various sort of soots and things um, to uh, sort of bring out the age in the carriage and any dirt around the mouldings and again you put this on lightly with a little bit of thinner just to thin it out a little bit and then it you don't want it to cover it entirely as you can see behind you can still get some of the cream through in the background and a bit of white just to give it the different uh, grain textures so uh, I will show you how to put that on after this little clip So as you can see the carriage has now got stage one of its uh, base coat on. So to apply the next layer which I am using the weathered uh, paint which you can see here. It's P996 and as I say these paints are from Phoenix Paints so there will be a courier charge if you order any over the internet as none of these paints can be sent by raw mail or post anymore. So thinners, weather teak, quite a big paintbrush which uh, will be slightly damp in thinners and also some uh, tissue paper uh, just to wipe the brush if I have any excess on it. I've also grabbed uh, the Painting Teak Coat Guide and as you can see here uh, Halford's White Primer from a can, so Rattle Can uh, Stage 2 is the Base Coat P995 which is a bit of a cream colour and then Step 3 Hand Paint the Phoenix Precision PP96197 so that's Weathered Teak and Golden Teak and Step 4 Varnish and Letter so that's the steps I'm using to create teak coaches. Um, as I've mentioned before, you can make them look a little bit older by adding more weathering to them if you wish. Or as I mentioned before, the best way to work on these things is to work from a picture of the carriage or locomotive itself. So before we start, always remember to mix the pot of paint well before using it um, otherwise it separates and you get various different colors of uh, paint over your model so i'm just gonna dab the brush into some thinners so uh, it's quite damp to work with and it was spread out quite nicely uh, so you only need a little bit of uh, weather teak on the paintbrush and you can just work um, which direction of grain you're doing so usually it's across that way and down on the vertical panels so let's start on this end here hopefully keeping it in the camera you don't want a complete um, flat um, colour if you, if you like you, you want it to swirl about so if you look at the grain of a carriage um, you can sort of see darks and lights and uh, various other grains on it so I've sort of thinned this down just to try and uh, get that you can also I suppose do it with a wet brush uh, a dry brush sorry and just uh, um, get it on uh, that way and uh, just try and leave a little bit of uh, base coat showing from underneath so just working around the carriage now just getting on to the final end I've done both sides I haven't done the uh, top lights yet as uh, so they need to be masked up to stop too much of the paint um, 
hitting the white of the roof. There we go, so that's one end done, doesn't take too long, just got to make sure that you've got all the areas around the windows. I'll just show you the side there, you can see some light and dark patches on the other end and the other side as well. So I'm going to let this dry and I'll come back and do the, uh, the top lights along the, uh, the top as they're all teak as well and that's going to take me a little bit of time uh, but uh, we'll get there in the, in the end. So coming back to the carriage now after all the paint has dried I've touched up the roof in certain areas so there's not too much uh, overflow of uh, teak onto the roof and it's a bit tidier looking now. So uh, as you can see we've basically done all the three steps and we've now got a teak finish on this carriage. However not all carriages look this pristine. Uh, obviously they've had a long life, uh, have been painted over time, uh, paint removed, revarnished, repainted etc etc. And also you know different panels of uh, wood have been replaced over time so you'll also get some colour differences. Um, but I'm not going to go to that extreme which you can see on RM web. I think it's uh, uh, varnished teak. If you look on there you can find uh, what I mean by extreme. Um, so I'm going to do a slightly different version but pinch a few little bits and pieces um, from that topic. Um, so as I say it's nice and clean, it looks pristine, so straight out of the uh, woodwork um, warehouse I suppose you could say, uh, or shed. Uh, so it's a bit it's a bit too pristine. So what I've done is I've given one end a bit of a wash with some soot. Um, but when you go over it a little bit more, um, you can push around that dirt into different crevices and uh, corners and mouldings, etc., and uh, make it look a little bit more worn and tired and this will brighten up with a bit of varnish. The other side is varnish, that's why it's brighter. Um, but you can see all the dirt on there. Now what I use, or have used, as it says on the topic, uh, on the varnished teak is this, which is Model Mate Soot Black. Um, I would advise altering it down quite a lot so it runs into where you want it to run. Um, and then with a cotton bud you can then take most of that off and push it around with a, a damp cotton bud um, and thus removing quite a lot of it to bring out the teak again um, so you can use that or you can also use a humbrol product um, which is just sort of a, a dark wash or black and you can just sort of clean that up in the same way So I'll just show you a little bit of how to do this. So I've got my black stain um, or weathering liquid as it's now called. So you shake it out, give it a good shake. And I just use what's left in the cap of the uh, pot. So you wipe down your paintbrush so it's nice and damp. So it will run where you want it to run. I only use a little bit and sort of see how it looks. So if we just sort of run it around, you can see it sort of goes into where you want it. It's quite fast drying. And also I would advise keeping it on the move and keeping it uh, damp because when it sets, it's a bit of a pain to move it around again. So. Slap it on nicely, which dries very quickly. Yep. Also cleaned up the end as well, which you probably can't see very well because of the light. But um, that's one way. 
I use to try make the carriage look a little bit dirty but not too dirty because obviously being on the end of a train and you're going to get soot from the locomotive and get some pieces stuck to it and into various bits and pieces of the woodwork looks a little bit better but um, generally that's how I do my teak on my carriages I've still got to do quite a bit of work to this um, I've still got to do all the lining I've still got just some varnish and I also need to move some steps as well uh, which are a little bit out uh, from the old uh, 3D print so I'm going to have to move them along a little bit um, hopefully uh, this will be a good replacement I hope uh, this has helped you have an insight into uh, how to do teak on carriages and hopefully uh, maybe you'll even buy this 3D print from Shapeways and have a go yourself um, until next time I hope you enjoyed the videos and uh, thanks again for watching and any questions please ask